This video is on the respiratory system and includes everything from the mechanics of breathing to diffusion. So first of all, it's important to note that the respiratory system has two main functions. The first one is to inhale, so that's the process of taking air into the body, so breathing in most importantly oxygen so that that can get to the working muscles and to exhale air so to get rid of carbon dioxide um, after the muscles have used the oxygen. It is uh, quite important just to note that if we just look at this diagram here um, we look at the percentages of inhaled and exhaled air. Now most of what we breathe in is actually nitrogen um, but as you can see, because nitrogen has no use for our working muscles or our body, the amount that is breathed in and breathed out is the same. The main difference here is that when we breathe in air, we've obviously got 21% oxygen. And when we breathe out, we've only got 16% oxygen because some of that has been used. And there is then a greater number of of carbon dioxide molecules that are being breathed out. So first of all, before we move on, it's important to know the passage of air through the lungs. So first of all, when we breathe in, it will go through the mouth or the nose and that will head down to the larynx. The larynx, commonly known as the voice box. Um, as the air travels down, it will travel down the bronchus. This is this wide a tube here and then the bronchus will split off into two branches so we've got uh, two branches here uh, and the left and a right and then they will split off into these things called bronchioles so we can see these branches are branching off like a tree these are all bronchioles as we get to the end of the bronchioles we've got these air sacs called alveoli um, these are very important, as you'll learn a little bit later on. Um, this is where all the diffusion happens and where air or oxygen gets moved into the blood. Diffusion. This is the movement of gas molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. You need to know this definition because it will likely get asked in an exam. Um, quite simply, if we look at all of these uh, molecules over here, all of these gas molecules, they might be oxygen, they might be carbon dioxide, all they want to do is move over there where there are less particles to even it out. So if we can see all of them there all bunched together, they want to move in that direction to even the number, even the spread of gas molecules in an area. It's also important to note um, that you do not get this mixed up with your GCSE biology um, with osmosis. Osmosis would, um, it's the same concept, but it is the movement of particles through a semi permeable membrane. So it'd have to go through a semi permeable membrane in plants. So don't get that one confused. The mechanics of breathing. So this will include the process of inhalation, as we spoke about earlier, and that's the breathing in of air into the lungs and exhalation, the breathing out of air out of the body. Um, if we look at these two diagrams here, I just want you to look at the bottom one first. This is actually a diagram of the lungs at rest. And this top one here is when we are breathing in. Um, so if we look at the diagram at the top, when we breathe in, we see that our diaphragm, which is usually dome shaped, it moves downwards. Our intercostal muscles, which are all of our muscles in between our ribs, they move outwards. This means that the cavity inside the lung, so all of this is larger than it is usually. This means that the pressure inside the lungs is lower than it is on the outside and therefore air moves into the lungs. 
So when we think about what we've just spoken about with our diffusion, because this uh, pressure in the lungs is lower now than the pressure on the outside, the air wants to move in and that causes the air to move in. If we look at uh, the second diagram here, when we relax, our intercostal muscles relax so they move back to how they were and our diaphragm also relaxes back into the dome shape that it is. Um, that means the pressure is lower on the outside of the lungs and therefore air wants to escape so it gets pushed out of the lungs. Equally we can see that the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm gently squeeze the lung so a bit like you squeezing a balloon it will also gently force the air out so gaseous exchange at the lungs so in that first diagram we saw the passage of air down into the lungs and the alveoli right on the end these are the air sacs them thousands and thousands of alveoli in the lungs and they allow diffusion to happen between oxygen and carbon dioxide. So this is a magnified picture of an alveoli, just a single one, and it has got a capillary carrying carbon dioxide towards it. Imagine we have just breathed in, there's lots and lots of oxygen molecules in here. So if we're using the process of diffusion, the carbon dioxide wants to get out of the blood and move into here to even out the pressure. Equally, because there's lots of carbon dioxide in the capillary here, the oxygen molecules in the alveoli want to get across here and into the blood. So we've got that movement of carbon dioxide out of the blood and we've got the movement of oxygen into the blood. Key facts about alveoli. So a few things that will help you just to understand how and why they allow diffusion to happen. They have a large surface area, so there's loads and loads of alveoli and they're covered in capillaries. So that allows lots of diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen to occur. They're one cell thick, which allows diffusion to take place. Same as uh, can be said for capillaries, they too are one cell thick and they allow for diffusion to occur. They have an excellent blood supply so that lots of gases can be diffused between them. And they are just the tiny air sacs on the end of the bronchioles. Aerobic and anaerobic exercise. So we have two systems that the body can use to produce energy. The first one of these is the aerobic system. Now this system uses oxygen to pro produce energy. Our chemical equation as we might have come across is glucose plus oxygen equals carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. So we've used our glucose or uh, whatever carbohydrates we've eaten. It's in the presence of oxygen. Once that energy is made, we breathe out the carbon dioxide. We produce water as sweat and then we get energy from that. Our examples of aerobic type exercise are any types of long distance running, swimming or cycling. Anaerobic exercise is without oxygen. It's key to know that. So our chemical equation here is just glucose. So whatever energy we've kind of taken into the body, what carbohydrates we've eaten, and that produces energy plus lactic acid, which we'll look at in a bit. Our examples of anaerobic respiration would be a 100 meter sprint, uh, sprint cycling or a 50 meter freestyle in swimming so the thing to note there is that they're very short and explosive style activities lactic acid which is produced will eventually cause an athlete's muscles to stop working until it is removed from those muscles lactate accumulation and muscle fatigue so as we were just speaking about there, lactic acid is a byproduct of working anaerobically without oxygen. 
Lactic acid causes muscle fatigue. What is muscle fatigue? It is the reduction in the muscle's ability to produce force. So the more your muscle gets fatigued, the less force it can produce and eventually it's going to stop working. How do we recover from this? Well, we've built up something called an oxygen debt. That's where we've been working harder than our aerobic system can keep up with. So when our muscles have been working really, really hard and we've built up lactic acid, our cardiovascular system and our respiratory system will continue to work until the muscles that we've been using are replenished with oxygen and lactic acid has been removed. We will therefore then be able to continue exercising if we want to. Short term effects of exercise on the cardiovascular system. So there are some key words that you need to know here. Um, you'll probably get asked these in your multiple choice questions. You might also get asked them in your uh, two and three mark questions, or you might have to interpret a graph which refers to these definitions. So stroke volume, or also known as SV, is the amount or volume of blood pumped out of the heart per beat. Heart rate, HR, the number of times the heart beats per minute. Cardiac output, the amount, volume of blood pumped out of the heart per minute. And the equation for cardiac output is SV times HR equals cardiac output. Short term effects of exercise on the respiratory system. So, again, you've got a few keywords that you need to know here. You'll likely get asked them in your one and two mark questions. So, tidal volume the amount of air inhaled or exhaled per breath, frequency the number of breaths taken per minute, minute ventilation the amount of air inhaled or exhaled per minute. The equation for this would be tidal volume times frequency equals minute ventilation. Just be aware that minute ventilation is described as VE in an equation. And the last one, vital capacity. So that's the maximum amount of air exhaled so that you can breathe out following a maximum inhalation. So after you've breathed in your maximum amount, it is then the maximum amount or volume of air that you can breathe out after that. Long answer exam questions you could get asked on the respiratory system. Question one. Discuss how the mechanics of breathing assist the body in the delivery of oxygen to the working muscles and the removal of carbon dioxide. Here you need to talk about how the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles work to inhale and to exhale. You also need to talk about what diffusion is and how diffusion occurs at the alveoli. Question two, explain the short term effects of exercise on the respiratory system during a football match. So here you need to speak about tidal volume, frequency, minute ventilation and vital capacity. How do all of these change during exercise? Question three, discuss the differences in the energy systems used between a 100 meter sprinter and a marathon runner. So here you're talking about aerobic and anaerobic respiration. What is the difference between the two? How do they produce energy? And what are their benefits? And also what are their disadvantages?